Oh yeah, yeah. So I can't remember if I even replied. Oh, I did. I did. Oh no, I was like, I need oh, yeah. you know, like I'm here. So let me know if somebody then I tried to die and me that I've been here before and so I'm talking about going with you to your neighbors. I have to I made sure of that. So I, I, I know when you're taking a class that you don't sometimes understand why you're taking it. I understand that it's hard to motivate yourself to work through something because your brain is like, all right, dude, why do we even need this shit? But uh, for, for, if you're going to power through this, just realize if you've never seen this before, my God, you're not going to get it in one day. Good Lord. I haven't talked about this much yet at all. But one thing I always try to do, I don't know if you noticed, is to try to give you problems I haven't fully talked about yet, to give you a chance to work it through your brain. Uh, don't feel, you're not going to get a grade on this. If you guess wrong, okay, I'm going to tell you what the right answer is. You can see why you were wrong. Okay, that's the way that's working through it. Right? That's the struggle. The struggle. Uh, okay. Let's see. So the very first struggle was to remember what the hell this meant. So this is the power that three needs to become Y. Y. I love it. So you can always write this as three to the tenth equals Y. Equals y. Now the harder part, this is hard for a couple of reasons. Yeah. So I know it's going to be log base what, and then we'll make it better on the second go around here. B. Please, dear God, don't make this your final answer. <laughs> to five points. Five points. Now, now, yeah, and remember the answer to a log is always the power. power. So you know the W goes there. So the only place for the five point six to go. Now, real quick, what do inverse functions do with each other? One inverse function's outputs is the other function's inputs. inputs. So watch this. The output to the original was. What's the output here? Five point six. Five point six. What's the input here? Five point freaking six. So that's why it makes sense. The output becomes the input. The input becomes the output. So yeah, that's a quick way to kind of check. Also, the great way to check this is it's easier to remember this. When you do this, do you get back to where you were? Yes. Yay. Are you guys okay with that? All right. Everybody who moved their head did so in a good way. So I'll <laughs> keep going. All right. So some of these are very straightforward, and some of them, as we learned, aren't. But the very first one is remarkably straightforward. Just several ways you can you can make this question. The question is either how many threes multiply to be 81, or the question is what power does three need to become 81? You guys should know now that those are the same questions, really, right? So what's the answer? Four. 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 It takes four threes. Since three to the fourth is 81, the answer here is four. Four. All right. Now, I think I got around to everybody enough that we see how Part B and, and several other ones work here. They are the same idea as if I had, what's the cube root of pi cubed? Pi. 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 Because those two functions are inverses of each other. Well, ln is log base e, and e is e, right? So ln and e to a power cancel. The answer is fine. Now let me show you another way to think of that. Where do you want to put this, Jeff? I don't know. I'll put it right here. So isn't, uh, let me write this the way I hate writing it, but oh well. Isn't ln log base e right? <coughs> so I replace ln with log base e, and then I have e to the pi. Now watch, this is kind of a silly question. What power do you put on e to make it become e to the pi? It's almost too dumb of a question to answer. You're like, I don't understand it because it's so stupid of a question, Jeff. Uh, of course, the power that E needs is pi to become E to the pi. Do you see how dumb that question really is? I'm not calling you dumb. Don't tell me. Don't let my dean say, Jeff, you're calling your students up. I'm saying the question is dumb. The question is so dumb, you can't even believe that it would be that dumb of a question. Uh, so one way to look at this is these cancel. The answer is pi. The other way is kind of a silly way to think about it. 
what power does this need to become this? Well, it's telling you the answer. It needs that power to become that. So whichever way makes more sense. If neither way makes sense, hopefully something will make sense soon. Or come see. Same exact thing happens in part D. Yeah. Because what's... Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped part C. Let me go back. Let me give myself some more. So is everybody cool with that so far? Mm -hmm. So part C is another one that's almost too easy to believe. Log base anything of one is zero. Because anything to the zero power is one. Except zero, but three. Zero to the zero is weird. Part D works just like part B because I have two inverse functions. They will always kill each other. This is understood to be log base what? 10. What did 10 to a power and log base 10 do? Cancel. Cancel. So the answer is 4. four. Now watch this. Now this way, what I'm about to say, I, you know, more evidence that I'm a freaking weirdo. I love what I'm about to say and almost 98% of students hate what I'm about to say. But for the 2% that get what I'm saying, what does this represent? By itself, what does that represent? What's a log always equal to? So that's important. I, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to talk about properties of logs. And if I remember that logs are powers, then the properties of logs are the properties of powers. We already know those. Shit. So we already know the properties of logs. Great. Uh, now watch. This is the power that what needs to become what? The power that 10 needs to become four. So when you raise 10 to it, it becomes freaking 4, because that's its job. What does this guy do? Well, if you raise 10 to this number, it would become 4. That's what it means. So what happens when I raise 10 to it? It becomes 4, like it said it would. That's a weird-ass way to look at it, but maybe 0.7 of you. <laughs> uh, or just, now I understand, this is the much easier way to look at it. That's, that's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that. They just kill each other, so then the answer is four. Kick okay, ass. I like it. Uh, all right. So then we get back to a little bit more normal. Notice that two is smaller than 16. But, but notice also, I mean, what happens of law, what's law base 16 of one? Zero. Zero. And what's log base 16 of 1 16th? Beautiful. So notice, if the number inside is smaller than 16, but not smaller than 1, the answer is going to be some kind of a root. The answer is going to be some kind of a, 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 a fractional power. If it's less than, uh, what am I trying to say? If it's less than 1, then it's going to have to become some negatives. It's got to flip it. So... What root would I apply to 16 to make it become 2? Four. The fourth root. So the answer is 1 fourth. Because 16 since 16 to the 1 fourth is 2. The answer is 1 fourth, and that's why. So here, you know what you've got to do to 16 to make it become 2. You've got to put a 1 fourth power. Well, what do I do to make that 2 flip then? The power has to be negative. So real quick, on the heels of that, what if I had, um, let's not use too much paper here, Jeff, log base 8 of, yeah, same thing, log base 8 of 1 half. How would you attack that? I would go like this. Well, how do I make 8 become 2? 1 third. One, uh, one third. A cube root of 8 is 2, right? Yeah. And then i got to flip it, so i got to make the power. Make it, make it so you got to break the problem down into steps. Negative one third. Big ass. So anytime I have a fraction inside of a log, cover the top, make that happen, and then make it negative power. Ooh. Freak. Okay. So move along here. Part G is directly related to part B and part D because it's got inverse stuff in there, right? So what happens in part G? Log base B and B to power cancel. The answer is H. Here, that would happen if only this was not written with a freaky-ass radical that we really didn't need, but oh well. 
So write it in the form it should always be in. 11 to the... And then what do these do? So the answer is... One half. What power does 11 need to become 11 to the one half? One half. I mean, it's telling you the answer. It's kind of weird. All right. And finally, these, let me just show you. Where did I put my calculator? There. And then we'll take a break. Um, so if you want to do 3 to the 2.16. So again, some of you guys have one where they just, it'll be 3 and then I'll have a caret and then it opens parentheses. Right, so you just put 2.16 in there. So what did you guys get? 10.73. Big ass. 10.73, I like it. So be really careful. In the, in the homework, it tells you to round to the thousandth place. It's a great place to show off that you know what the hell the thousandth place is. Yeah. Right? So so do that. Okay. Uh, so this one says hundredth place, right? So natural log, where's the natural log? Yes, yeah, there it is, right there. So natural log of 111 comes out to be. Yeah, sweet. I like it. Kick ass. Which makes sense because 3 to the 4th is 81. E is a little bit less than 3, so it needs a little bit more than 4 to make it become a little bit more than 81. I mean, so in a sense, I don't know if you guys see how to feel out if that answer makes sense. Of course, you're like, it makes sense because that's what the calculator said. Yes, okay, that makes that's good too. Um, and then my log button is right there. So log of 0.4132. Now, why does it make sense? Now, again, what would log of 1 be? Zero. Zero. So log of anything less than 1 has to be negative, because now I've got below 0. So that's why this makes sense that the answer comes out to be negative. Because not only do you have to root it, it's got to also flip it to make it become even smaller. So any questions from that handout at the moment? All right, let's take a break. Come back at uh, 10 now. I'm going to try to get us out of here a little early. That sounds like a good, good goal, Jeff. <laughs>